So I'm going to try to explain this, uh, <clears throat> the advanced um, design um, project in less than 10 minutes. This ought to be good. All right. So I know I have a menu system. And then over down here, I have a main menu, game over menu. So just to demonstrate real quick, main system, main menu, start menu, game over menu, and uh, the regular game. Inside of the start menu, real quick, we've got a space background, that's that. And uh, these are particle effects of stars, so I'm going to just drag this over here real quick. And this uh, particle system uh, tells all about the stars, so uh, you can change the color, you can change the size, all of that over here in this section. I'm using the particle system that's already inside of the Unity um, system. Um, and then I had to have a level script, uh, so I'll take a look at that for just a second. I have a music player in here uh, so that we can uh, listen to the, the background music that I chose. So right there is uh, and uh, the audio clip. I chose Solar Eclipse, so I have it saved. If you get the audio system, all you have to do is add the component there at the bottom. Hold on, let me move it up here. You just have to add the component inside the inspector, and you can get the audio source. And then you just made the script. The music script so that would also might include some of my music uh real quick show you the scripts uh, i've got all those scripts but uh what we need is the level script and the music script so that we can see so level script real quick coming up i'm not going to explain a whole lot about it but you know we can start load start seeing menu i'll find the object we're finding the game the, op, the game session object so i have another script that's game session it's referring back to that uh, one for communication, so they'll have to read each other. And then you're loading uh, the game over, the game script that you need. Uh, delay in seconds tells how long to load it. And you're just getting calling the scene manager that's set inside of Unity as well. Load scene, set, loading game over up here, loading game. So when you press the game button, you're going to load the scene, you're going to load the game. So that's basically an extremely quick way of explaining the level script um, then i said a music player script so i here's the music player script just to show you and then i'll go, show you the game session okay so the music player i'm set it up as singleton so there's only one of them um and then it's going to destroy it if i have more than one so if more than one tries to let it can never load more than one it's like uh, uh there can only be one singleton one game manager thing so and then in the one level script to get the game design going here is the game design script also set up this as a singleton as well. Um, so find object types of the game session. Um, this is the way of calling it to load scenes and also with score. So um, I know I also have on there about score. So you can get the score, return the score if it's plus or equal to uh, it more than or equal to the score. You're going to get the score value. And then when you reset the game, you're destroying the game object of the score because you want the score to set back to zero again. So just to demonstrate that it does work. Um, we will talk about the particles in a minute. Okay, but if you press start with the, oh, and um, also in there, uh, I don't have time to do all that, but uh, you can change the color of these. So I changed it that when I hover over it, it turns green. And when I, when I, when I uh, press on it, it turns gray. Um, and, but all they were, they were, there you go, go there, go ahead and hide, so it can go to the next, oh, let me go ahead and hide, there you go, my score is working, um, the score of the check, and I'm going to compare the great score in the game, uh, come on, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, there we go, game over, uh, and then you can play again, and my final score is up here, or you can go back to the main menu, so just to show you, yes, here in just a minute okay so real quick i'm inside the player script um to get the player to move uh i had and i also talked about in my uh in my feature list that there would be padding there would be a border 
around the screen. That way the player won't fly out in the middle of outer space. Hi, oh, get out of outer space because it's in outer space. Sorry, that's a terrible joke. Anyway, I don't have time for jokes. Uh, but serialized field. So you, maybe speed. They're all serialized fields so you can change them in the spectrum. Game designer can change them in that they would like. Um, and also added sound. So these audio clips and you just add the component in the spectre and it would add the sound. I have one for a deaf sound. I have one for a shooting sound for player. This padding on the x-axis, y-axis uh, stops the player from going outside of that screen. Um, given the health, there's the integer health, so it gives them 500 health. Um, so here's the x min, x max, minimum, minimum, maximum um, to get the to, for the boundaries. So this is where we set up the boundaries, set up movement, fire the projectiles, uh, just to give you an idea. Um, inside, I'm going to go ahead and cover damage dealer too, the damage dealer script, and I'll show you here in a minute. But the damage dealer is to uh, uh, to make sure that the player and the enemy has damage. Um, and the enemy has one of these too. Um, a lot of this is similar to the enemy. The movement is going to be different on the enemy, but the getting the damage, the health. If the health is less than or equal to zero, object's going to die, meaning the player's going to die, which is what I just demonstrated too in the little video there. Um, here is where we're getting the input for the move. Uh, input, get button down, or sorry, for, for the fire input. Uh, so for, we're dragging the input from the pimp manager that's already installed in Unity. If we get bitten down, get button up. Uh, if you press down on the uh, mouse, you're going to fire. If you let up on the mouse button, get button up, it stops firing. And that's a core routine. So right here, the animator uh, to fire continuously and wait a couple seconds to continue to fire because I said also that there were time between shots. Uh, and here's the audio source again. Play it clip at point means that's playing that exact wave file and has the ability to play that exact wave file. You're getting the sound, you're getting the position in it, and then you're getting the the volume of what you want to do for the shooting. Okay, so here's the moving. So input manager, get access is where we're we're going, whether we're doing horizontal or vertical. So we're getting that time dot delta time and move speed. So move speed allows you change the whatever speed you want the player to move at, and then time dealt dots of time is uh, so it doesn't slow down your computer. Um, and then uh, this is just to flip the sprite so that it, um, it looks the same on both sides. A math F clamp helps with the borders as well. And then right here is where you're setting up the boundaries of skin. So you're getting the camera viewport to world point means like right in the center of the world. Uh, you're creating the new vector feed. This is the X, this is the Y, this is the Z where they are in space. And then you're adding that padding right there. Now, real quick, just to take a look at the damage dealer, it's nothing into it. It's integer is damage, so it's 100. And then it's returning the damage and destroying the game object if the object is hit. Okay, a little bit inside of the enemy. Um, see, so we have the same kind of things that we're doing in the player. Deaf sound, shoot sound, that's how you get the sound for them. Uh, you, he also has projectiles just like the enemy so that he can shoot the player. He has a health value. He has a score value. So you're at 150 points every time you shoot one of the enemies, um, which collects on the score of the game. Um, this is uh, so that, uh, well, here, shot counter random dot range means uh, you can't quite tell. That gives the range, that gives the random factor to when they're going to shoot. So it's not as predictable. Um, this is the shoot counter timer because we said there is time between shots. So this gives it the time between shots on each part of it. Um, and then this is the how we need it to fire, to program it to fire. We're getting the position of it, quantum identity. We're getting the uh, the rotation of it, criterion identity, sorry. And then we're getting the component rigid body 2D. They all have to have 2Ds and they all have to have colliders. And I think I had that in there too. So this is when, when you're entering, trigger, enter 2D. So when you enter that area, you're going to pull that collider and then these things are going to happen and the damage deal dealer is going to return the number of damage process the hit. Um, and then when it processes the hit, if it is the health is minus or equal to damage. So if it's less than the damage or equal to the damage dealer, the health is less than zero or equal to zero, the object is going to die, whether it's the player or the enemy. In this case, it's the enemy. Okay, so this is a quick look inside the enemy pathing script. You have no idea how hard this is to do this in just 10 minutes. Uh, so waypoints, uh, wave configuration. This is how you're getting the waypoints on it. Um, and so that you can uh, move towards the object and that the enemies will move toward the waypoints. 
they have to, for enemy pathing to work, it has to connect to the enemy scripts. It has to connect to the other scripts. Um, so there's that. And it also has to connect to the enemy spawn. Let me get that in here too. And then I'm going to show you the enemy pathing um, as well for the, the wave. Okay, so it's pulling the wave index again. It has to call from the wave configuration script. And then it can start the routine of calling, spawning all the enemies in waves. They all work together and all communicate um, to get this to, to work appropriately. Um, so let me hit the wave configuration script as well so you can see inside of it as well. Come on and load. Okay, so um, <clears throat> you're adding the wave points. You're adding the child of the, of the wave transform here of the, of the, of the wave. And then you're getting the time between the scrums and the random factor, getting the number of enemies and getting the speed of the object. So um, let me see, to look at this in the game, and we've got an enemy path right here. And let me pull that up. And then, oh, actually, <laughs> there we go. That would help. Okay, so uh, path zero has waypoint zero, one, and two. So if we have zero, it's there. One it's there and two it's there so i have the waypoints all all over the place and it's connected to their paths and in order to change that all you had to do is go up to uh you can't see that because of the camera but if you go here you can change the color of that too uh, they don't appear in the game um but they follow the path that they, they uh it's just there so that um uh, to to be able to play it so if i played this um, see how they're like this guy's coming down here. Like this guy coming down. These guys, these guys are coming over so here. Okay. These guys are the turn into this point. These guys, these, these are really high ones. They stay and they follow the like this and zigzag out. See, so that's, that's how they're all on their own. So the only things we have to explain real quick, we have a background scroller script. So this is the background scroller script. It's going to get my material because you have to turn the 2D UI uh, from the, the 2D sprite into my material. And then you put it into the script and it turns the texture on and off inside this script. Um, so that's the scrolling background. And if we pull it over here, so it has the background scroller script attached to it to get it to work and if i find it in here and i go to my background elements and i go to background um because you, you create a quad once you create a quad it automatically gives you a quad here a mesh render um but it only works with uh right here this this texture see it's got to be a texture um and then it's easy, easy to switch them though because so like if you're in your assets you can go to your your sprites give me your sprites hurry up hurry up hurry up okay so if i go here and then I take this and I can switch it. Ah, man, all right. <laughs> I cannot do this fast. Okay, so you create, and then you're gonna head to material instead, or you can change it too when you go here and then you're, you, you're inside your spec, you change it here as well. And you change it um, inside of here um, to the default to get it to turn into a texture. And then where it's a clamp down here, you change it to repeat over and over again for the background texture itself because you want that to repeat. So I'll show you what I mean when we play the game. So it's probably um, repeating the same texture again. It's like you are blind for space. So real quick, I think we have the SFX, VFX to go over. So we've got a star field. Um, it's really easy to you just right click and then you uh, set up the effects. And when you get a particle system, because a particle system is built into Unity, you get this to play around with. You can change the color of them. See, so maybe I'll change my white. I kind of like the pink though, so I'm going to go back to the pink. And then so they change inside here. The red box just tells you where they are on the map. And you can change the size over here and adjust the speed of them and all that inside this field um, and inside the other, the other places here to get those to work the right way. Finally, I'm going to head back into this script here just to show you the SFX. So, um, and that's right where you clip the audio clip. So you play the audio clip that you want, the wave, and then you hit it to the the deaf sound uh, of what what you want to what what you wanted it to play. So real quick inside the inspector, you just grab your wave file, deaf sound, you pull it in. You can change the volume in here inside the inspector. You can change the um, type. So this shoot sound is different than the deaf sound because it's two different tracks. You can tell that here. And then right here is the projectile that's attached as well, and it has its own script as well. 
and you can change the speed and when it fires, giving it a, a break between firing. Um, and that's within the player script and the enemy has the same, the same things on it as well. Uh, so about 15 minutes. Um, hopefully that works. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.